Yesterday, I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a CNBC post in which they talked about a person who went out there and did a survey of a really high number, 225 millionaires. This person interviewed all of them and put them all into four categories. Here are the four categories. Saver investors, company climbers, virtuosos, and dreamers. This person said that every single millionaire fell into one of these four categories. Again, I saw this on Instagram. By the way, you want to follow me on Instagram? That's my uh, handle. Make sure you don't follow the fake ones. They're all asking you for crypto. I don't do that. So these four categories are incredible. The first one, saver investors. That's the one I'm going to talk about last. It is probably the most important one because I think every element still needs that even if you all fall into the other three. Company climbers. These are basically people who go to a company, work their way up, try to get a really high salary or some sort of stock options, and they make a lot of money along the way that gives them the opportunity to become millionaires, which is an awesome, awesome thing to do. Virtuosos. These are the ones that are the best at what they do. They tend to need some sort of formal education, doctors, lawyers, accountants, things like that, that then they're paid very well to do because it's harder to get more advanced education. And so therefore, because of supply and demand, they're paid very, very well. I know that in the world of medicine, if a doctor's making a couple hundred grand a year, that's an okay living, right? Because there are some specialties where they can literally make high six figures as a starting salary after their formal education in that field. And that's an incredible opportunity to build wealth. Imagine if you're making $800,000 a year as a doctor at the age of 35, after all your training, after taxes, that's 450, 500,000 a year, you're gonna be a millionaire in no time, especially considering you were living off a much lower income before. Fourth one, dreamers. These tend to be people who are entrepreneurs or actors or things like that. They go spend so much love for what they do that eventually the money ends up in their account anyhow. And that's a big thing for dreamers. They do what they love and it ends up working out for them. You'll always hear a lot of billionaires say, do what you love and you'll make a lot of money doing it. And I agree to that. I agree with that to a certain element. There are some people who hate that statement. But remember, you gotta remember where they're coming from. They did something passionately and they did it well and therefore it made them a lot of money. Money was probably a big part of their motivation to a certain extent, especially their business people. Not many people really say, I want to be a billionaire. Only psychopaths like me sit there and say those things. And it shows up though that I found for myself, the more and more I enjoyed what I did, the more and more money I made. The money was important, but it wasn't the driving factor. But the most important one is the first one, savers and investors. This is the one that I probably fall in the category for. I just like investing. I always tell people, when people say, what do you like to buy? I like buying investments. I like buying apartment buildings. I like buying stocks. I like selling puts and call options. I love doing these things and it generates me money. But even if you can't do that, everyone in this world can be a saver. If you make income, you can save. And it's amazing to me how much money, how little money can go to lead to such a big result the end. So let me show you something that's very interesting. We have software. Our software has become very popular. Everythingmoney.com, it does stock analysis. It's going to have real estate analysis soon, things like that. But one of our tools is called the retirement calculator. So in this tool, it asks you to put some parameters in. So I'm going to start here by going, let's say I'm aged 30 right now. I want to retire at 65 and I currently have $50,000 in savings, and I'm going to save an extra $10,000 a year. My increased percentage of saving, every year my income is going to go up, and therefore my savings should go up. And I think your savings should go up faster than your your income. So if your income is going up 4% a year, you should save 5% a year extra. Increase by 5% a year. Annualized returns. Let's say you do 9.9%, which is what the normal stock market does over long periods of time. You invest in an ETF, and you get that 9.9%. Now, during retirement, you'll probably scale it back a little bit. But if you join our community, we can show you a way to make 3 or 4 5% a year off just selling call options on your portfolio. We won't even factor that in right now. We're going to sit there and take your annualized returns down to 5% in retirement. And let's say you expect to live to age 100, and inflation is 3.5%. Your current income, let's call it 75000 a year, and you want to live off that same income, 100% of your income in retirement. So you're going to take no hit. And remember... It's going to increase your income as time goes on. We hit the generate button, and guess what? It tells us right here, you don't have enough for retirement. You need to save $825 more per year. Now, that means not just for retirement. That's going to mean for until the end of your life. But look what happens with that money up into the age of retirement. Age 65, you're going to have $6.4 million in the bank, starting with $50,000 and adding $10,000 a year. 
So for 35 years, you're saving 10,000 a year, that's 350 grand, an initial 400,000, 50,000 for a total of 400,000, and it grows to $6.4 million per year. The reason why our software is so great is ours doesn't stop here. Most financial advisors would sit there and say, hey, you have 3 million? That's plenty to live off of. Well, I just sat there and said to you, okay, well, what, what kind of income do you want to have in retirement? You stop saving and now you start spending. And that's where you don't have enough. If you live to age 100, you're going to run out of money around age 98. That's the key to our software. Every other financial planner out there just wants to get you to retirement and say, look, you have a few million dollars. It doesn't work. What we're trying to focus on here is saving money. And everybody in this world can be a saver. And this is the number one way to become a millionaire. I remember reading the book, The Millionaire Next Door, when I was a kid. And the most common way were the people who lived well within their means and saved a portion of their money. How much? These people did 20%. In this article I read, these people did 20% of their after-tax income. After-tax. So if they make 100000 a year, after-tax is probably 70000 and they were likely to save $14,000 of that. Okay? That's in tax-deferred accounts, things like that. Always maximize your tax-free accounts first. Tax-deferred accounts first. Might as well save on the back of the government. It doesn't make any sense how to do that. But if your income is so high, where then you have extra money left over, put it into a separate brokerage, Schwab, you trade, whatever one you like, it does not matter as long as you're able to buy lowest cost ETFs and ride the market out for decades. If you're doing that, you will become this. You will become the saver millionaire. And it'll be awesome. Look what I said before. Starting with $50,000 at the age of 30, saving $10,000 a year, would gave you $6.4 million at retirement. That's an incredible, incredible number. Absolutely incredible number. And you saw the numbers at, at, at the age of 100, you might have gone, might have been in the negative, but let's say you learn options from our community and you're able to get an extra 3% of your returns in retirement. Guess what, guys? You have enough for retirement. In fact, you're going to have $29 million upon death. What did you say? Why? That extra 3% per year led to, instead of $6.4 million in retirement, you now have, you still have the 6.4 million, but afterwards you're now making plenty of money where your account grows every single year because of those options income. That's the reason why you need to learn them. So this has changed the way you look at the world. This changed the way I looked at millionaires. I always thought the vast majority of millionaires would have been from this group right here, but it's not. People who run their own business, it's from saver investors. And it's very reassuring because everyone can do it. Not a single person... And a single person out there can't do it. Not everybody can do this. Not everybody can do this. Not everybody can do this. But everyone can do this. And this community is geared towards these people. We want you to become a great saver, a great investor, but most importantly, very fundamentally sound emotionally when markets are going up and down. If you like this video, you want to learn more, I ask you to do two things. One, subscribe to this channel. And two, check out our next video, Value Investing Strategies for 2022. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>